this session, we had the amazing Dove, who is seated here. <laughs> and so the energy level was really high, right? Now, because I didn't say it the first time, I'm going to say it now, right? Dove had said that Nigerians are very friendly people. Yes? 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 Great. Good. Now, I don't want you to fall hand. So when I introduce our next chef, I want you to bring the roof down. I'm talking about the warm Lagos welcome. You know, we're happy people. We need to show them that we really are happy people. Ladies and gentlemen, our next chef, I call him the fine boy chef. He's a comedian. He is the sandwich king. Put your hands together for Jeff Morrow. Uh. Bring the roof down, people! <laughs> there you go, Jeff! Woo <laughs> Little well windy. Thank How you, Abby. You? Can I call you Abby? Yes, Abby. Abby's good. But, Abby's but good. To, to you guys, it's Abby Soe. But because it's Jeff, Abby. What's okay. up, Legos? <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. This is, I'm a little wind. I didn't know what I was going to do when I came in, so I just, <laughs> I felt running while holding my shorts up was the best thing. To, no, you did Best well. way to introduce myself to your beautiful country. So <laughs> almost pants well. myself, but. <laughs> So Ooh. what's up, Jeff? What are we doing today? We are making a cake. No, he's joking. I kid, I kid. No. Can anybody guess what we're going to make today? A sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. But what kind of sandwich are we making? Well, I'm, uh, you know what? I want to do something that I love, right? I think okay. that always comes through during one of these demos or classes. Okay. Cook, you, cook what you know and cook what you love and it'll okay. automatically. Okay. Do you need some water? Can we get some water? It'll automate. I have water. How about some oxygen? Um, so I'm going to do a... One of my favorite sandwiches on the planet okay. is like a fried chicken sandwich mm. with like iceberg lettuce mm. and creamy tomato mm. on a soft pillowy bun. You take a bite. Mm. Your teeth hit the crunch of that expertly hand-breaded deep-fried piece of chicken. And you get it, and a little drips down your little... And then it's going all over you today. Too strong. Then you end up trying to eat your own hand, and you're like, stop. Okay. This is too good. We're going to make it even better. We're going to do a classic Nashville hot preparation okay. of a fried chicken thigh, okay. dark meat. Anybody a dark meat or a white meat? Who likes white, white meat. meat? White meat. Who likes the dark stuff? Nice and juicy with the skin, okay? okay. And we're going to do it a couple different ways, but we're going to do some boneless. I'm going to fry some, maybe one of you guys get, I don't know, a drumstick okay. to eat or today. I, 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 I prepared for this. We're going to make our own sauce for it, make our own uh, hot seasoning. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Great bread. And you guys have, uh, you know, beautiful produce here and everything. Okay. I have some great Thank helpers. You. So shall we start? Yes. We're excited. All right. So okay. every sandwich, there's, there's some rules of sandwiches, right? We want to, I said this in Dustin, it's all about proper ratios, right? You don't want a big old bagel with one slice of meat, one slice of cheese, mm -hmm. and too much sauce. It's just okay. not, it's not going to be a, a, a fun eating experience. So okay. it's not only about the build of the sandwich and the ratios of the meat, cheese to bread to sauce, fresh meat to, you know, pickled product to fresh vegetables. So I think every sandwich needs these key elements, and that is... Great bread treated right. We'll get to that in a little bit. You need something fresh, so I have some tomatoes and iceberg lettuce. The, do you guys use a lot of iceberg lettuce here? Yep, we do. It's like the working man's lettuce. It doesn't get a lot of love. <laughs> Nothing tastes like that. You can't do anything with it. You can't reduce it. You can't, you know, make braised iceberg. You can't do anything except just crunchy lettuce for a sandwich or in a salad. It's perfect. In a salad, yeah. Uh, and I believe every sandwich needs a high acid tangy element, right? And that's, that's usually from pickles. Are we pick? You guys get a lot of pickles here in Nigeria. I love yeah, pickles. but I so, don't like pickles. I'm sorry. I saw someone that you don't like pickles? No. Next moderator. <laughs> Who wants to moderate? And you got to be a yes man to me. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. But I did read that. I mean, talking about things that you don't like. I yeah. hear you don't like cottage cheese. 
I do not like cottage cheese. Uh-huh. Is that even a thing in Nigeria, cottage yes. cheese? Yes. You guys nope. like it? Ugh. No. Cottage it's like all cheese. clumpy. It's like clumpy milk. Okay, guys. And then you see it, and it's like... And then it smells funny. It's like a it. horror movie, like the thing that bubbles up out of the bathtub when you're in that horror movie, and you're like, <laughs> I'm just going to relax in the bath and not worry about the demons amiss. Okay. And next thing you know, the cottage cheese bubbles, bubbles up, and up it's up strangling you. <laughs> Anybody ever have that fantasy? No, nightmare? no, Jeff, that's just you. That's just but me. okay, I mean, if, if, if we all say that, okay, we don't like cottage cheese, but here's another thing that Jeff doesn't like. He doesn't like curry in his food. Curry. And Nigerians like curry. Okay, this is, maybe you read an old bio of me that's probably <laughs> over a year old. Can we get okay. some, uh, like, a part, one part, about that much vinegar and then like, that much water in there, please? We're going to get our pickling liquid. I, I've recently... Because of my wife, Sarah, who's right there. She can wave over Hi, there, my Sarah. lovely wife, Sarah. She, she, uh, she, she was kind enough to come with me on this journey, right? This is the, like, by far the farthest demo I've ever done, you know? Okay. It was like Cleveland and then this. <laughs> um, so we, uh, she's, she, Sarah's a great cook and even better baker. And she okay. loves curries, yellow curries, okay. green curries, okay. um, like Thai red curries. So we have been exploring a lot at home due to her kind of expanding okay. our menu. Okay. So I've, I've, I've gained a greater appreciation for okay. it. So I'm open for anything now. All right. Except how, cottage cheese. <laughs> so how does Sarah manage, I mean, you being the great chef that uh-huh. you are, doesn't, doesn't it put any pressure on her to deliver any sort of meals, no? I, she has to answer that, but I do believe, like, when people uh, invite us over to their house parties or holidays, there's a certain expectation, expectation that we get, you know, and I'm sure Duff can attend. Like, Duff just can't bring, you know, a, a, a grocery store uh, a 12-pack of mini, you know, the oh, mini brownies, the brownies, right? He can't do that. Uh, he can't do the old Trader Joe shuffle on the way. But, so he's got to bring a, a freaking race car cake. Yeah. And so people expect us to bring something to the table. But a lot of times, it's maybe a nice bottle. If we don't have time to create something, a nice bottle of wine. But Sarah is, that's when she does majority of her baking. Wouldn't you agree, honey? Is like for holidays and parties, cakes, cookies, everything. I guess she makes a nice chocolate chip cookie. It's the best. You said it, it was It is a best. very good chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. With or with Yay, Sarah, pecans. guys. You clap yep. for Sarah. <laughs> she does. She does. Okay. But she's also very health conscious. Okay. So, like, when, you know, when she does make it for the house, I feel like we're not going to get it again for a long time. <laughs> and I end up going into diabetic comas usually <laughs> for three days, so I'm out. So, if you see on Instagram that we're baking in the Morrow house, you're not going to see me for a couple days. <laughs> okay. So, I'm cutting up just some of my favorite pickling stuff here, which is I found in the beautiful pantry here at the, at the prep kitchens, mm-hmm. an orange bell pepper. And another, again, people like the sandwich is, has kind of got a lowly reputation, right? Mm-hmm. We all grew up like just throwing things together in between two pieces of bread or a bun, bringing it to lunch, having it sit in a hot locker all day with the apple on top of it and making that indentation where the jam goes through the top bun. You know what I'm talking about? And that PB&J. Like that's most, sandwiches never were looked at with much culinary love, right? Mm -hmm. But all you're doing is building a plate, but just on bread. So Mm -hmm. I look at it like I'm sculpting and building this beautifully, you know, constructed plate with different elements and textures and especially which brings me to my next point color you know we all see with our you know we all eat with our eyes first Mm -hmm. and that's you know everybody knows that but sandwiches people are like oh you don't see it and that's not true you you do see it especially if you cut it in half so I'm gonna make sure these pickles are representing different colors that aren't represented in all the other ingredients so we got some beautiful bright orange Orange we got the red Onion, onion here, which pickles really nice and turns almost hot pink. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to uh, pickle some of these beautiful red Fresno chilies for some heat. Okay. You guys can handle a little spice here, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we got a little spice little more in there, please. We can, can do, do more that. of each? More, more vinegar and a little more water. And there's some salt and sugar just doing right, there. So we're going to be taking questions from the audience. Please do. I look forward but to your I questions. But I know that you had said, during the, the, the competition, the contest on TV, one of the things that, you know, that had, they had said about your love for sandwiches. Yes. There isn't much to say about a sandwich. This was during my journey in food. Anybody watch me on Food Network Star Season 7 like nine years ago? Uh-huh. Was anybody not rooting for me? Everyone Be honest. <laughs> Let's just take, send them out of the class now. If you weren't rooting for Jeff, I, raise your hand. I have a whole security detail here. Okay. Um, 
so everybody's on this side. But yeah, so that was almost nine, that was about nine years ago I won okay. uh, Food Network Star, and you yes. said that, that, that yes. was, people are like, this can't last. You can't, yeah. You can't, you can't make a career on sandwiches. You can't do a show on sandwiches. You can't do this because it's just sandwiches. This guy's too funny. He's too much of a joke. He can't do it. Nine years later, <laughs> yes, five Emmy did. nominations. One Toyota, one Honda. <laughs> Go, Jeff. Two bedroom apartment on Lake <laughs> Michigan. Okay. <laughs> Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Oh, such a big boy. <laughs> Two gym memberships. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> iPhone, the smaller one, but an iPhone. <laughs> iPhone 6. Bluetooth <laughs> earbuds. Oh my God, Jeff. Apple Music prescription. The mid one, not the high one. The one you share with Sarah? We share everything. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing over there? Guys, do we have questions? But yeah, so obviously, you know, sandwiches are so... It's every, every culture, continent, country, everything has their version of an edible sandwich of mm -hmm. some sort, whether it's on bread or a, ba a, a bao bun or a lettuce wrap or, you know, uh, injara or whatever. Like, everybody has that vehicle for everything else that's handheld, you know? Yeah. So I always knew that... We're, we're, I was only as limited as, as much as I was re learning to travel, you know, willing to travel and educate myself. Okay. So it's been wonderful. All right. Okay, so while he's chopping the onions, do we have questions, comments? Great. Okay, we have a lady. Oh, we have someone in the front. One second, please. Hello, Steph. Hello. Uh, um, when Sunny Anderson was here last year, she loved our jollof rice. So I wanted to ask if you've got the chance to taste the jollof rice here. My other friends here? Oh, so Sonny Anderson I'm was sorry. here. Sonny yeah, Anderson why do you think I'm here? Year. She gave me, she, <laughs> she allowed me to be here, Sonny did. <laughs> okay, so and she Sonny's had my some second boss, I'll put it that way. Nigeria is known for its jollof rice. We're jo big on our jollof rice. I had it, I guess. So yes. she's asking if you've had some of our jollof rice. I had some last night, some jollof oh, yeah? rice, some beef, beef and chicken suya. We had some of the snails that they cut up. Goat roll. <laughs> well, uh, did you say ok? What'd you say? A goat roll? <laughs> it was like a it was like a it was like an egg roll stuffed with goat, right? Is that a big thing here? I ate goat I ate meat. three pieces. Should oh. I have not have? No, yes, you should have. Was <laughs> it good? Was it good? Uh oh, something's <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're gonna need an extra Here comes the drone! <laughs> is that thing say is it good? that thing's not gonna sh No. Alright. No, it's good. But good. Alright, good. Alright. So okay. have I had I had the jollof rice, but Sonny I know is is you must get it. It's unbelievable. It's the best thing you've ever had. And it was very good, so I can't wait to try more, right? What else do you guys want him to try before he goes? Yeah, what should I try? Amala. Uh-oh. <laughs> how about this? Really what good. Should, all at once, everybody tell me what they should try. I'll lock it in. I'm like a, you know, I'm like a photographic memory. Okay. All at once, we say it on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I'll have that. <laughs> can't wait. That, I cannot wait. Okay. So let's have another question. Do we have a question? Okay, let's take the lady at the back. How's my oil? Even though me sandwiches Can are your just expertise, do that for another minute. what one other more pepper thing in there. do you like to make Slice the most? Slice on the bias, nice and thin. Another of that Fresno. What's that, young lady? Hi. Even though sandwiches Hi. are Hi. your Television's expertise. Hi, television's Jeff Morrow. Nice to meet you. Go ahead. <laughs> what other thing do you like to make the most? Uh, besides, I mean, obviously, I'm not only making sandwiches at home, right? I love everything. I love soup. We love big, big, you know, we love big ribeyes and grilled steaks. I love smoking meat. Uh, my restaurant, I have Pork and Mindy's. We're currently at like 10 locations. We do all slow smoke barbecue of beef, chicken, pork. We smoke cauliflower. We smoke peppers. We smoke everything. I love it. Now, now that it's finally, it was snowing two days ago in Chicago. Uh, we got like four inches of snow. It was miserable. But I still went out there and fired up the grill and everything. So now that it's summer, I love, I love barbecuing. I like to, my wife lo loves it the most because I take the mess outside and not in the kitchen. 
She's the only one I know. She, she's the only person who's ever accused me of being a messy cleaner. How are you? How could even? It's like an oxymoron. You're the messiest cleaner. I go, but I'm cleaning. Whatever. Okay. okay. Does that answer your question? Very good. Yes. Barbecues. Okay. Another question. Oh, we have a lady at the back. Just for mine. Back. How are we doing over there? I'm oh, doing great. Yeah. We're doing great. So there we go. How's that looking? Beautiful. We can take that off the heat. We're just going to do a quick pickle here. And you can do like any, whatever. You can bump this up any way you want by putting garlic in there, mustard seeds, whatever aromatics or, uh, you know, herbs you have in the house, uh, black peppercorns. But you don't need to cook this. When, when you're pickling, you just want to kind of simmer it, add your veg, take it off the heat, okay. and then you can start canning it or putting it in mason jars and doing the whole thing. But just like this alone will last several weeks weeks in your fridge, right? Okay. So you put a little bit of vinegar and some sugar? Yes. So it's about that much vinegar. I'd say 75-25 ratio, vinegar to water, okay. salt and sugar. Salt and Simple, sugar. right? Okay. Guys, are we taking notes? Yeah? Okay. See, that's going to be Fantastic. very good. Uh, we Who have a question, that? the lady good. in black. Let me help Hi. you with that. Is this, can Thank I get, you. Hi, Jeff. We have like, hello, Hi. how you doing? Like a couple dishes Bye. like that, one My for that and one for the is, milk. At what point in your life did you think you should go into sandwich business full time? Um, good question. What, when, at what point in my life did I make that decision to go in the sandwich business? I, uh, I think it was just, it was my first job, you know, much like Duff. I, I, was, I got a, a work permit. I was 14 and a half years old. I walked to the place closest to my house, which happened to be a butcher shop, and I got a job there. I, got, I made like $3.62 USD an hour, scrubbing fat off pans and sweeping blood and sawdust off the floor. Wow. Worked for the chain-smoking, mustached, butchers cutting meat, <laughs> blood all over them. They swore at me. They were mean to me. Really? And I showed up every day, and I loved it. I go, I love this business. You know, I just <laughs> like being around food. So then I upgraded for $5 an hour, the place three doors down, which was a, a deli. Okay. So then I got to see what it's like to, and what made me fall in love with sandwiches is that most of us, we order, at least in the States, you go to a deli and there's a counter and there's a guy behind the counter slicing meat, making sandwiches in front of you, giving you the sandwich, all the while having a conversation with you. So I love the act, I love the craft of cooking, okay. making things from scratch, caring about the food just as we are today, but also interacting with the customers, trying to get a rise out of them, trying to make them laugh and chuckle, bring a little lightness to their day. So me, I've worked in restaurants in the back of the house, sweating, grueling hours. It, there's, there's a certain energy required for that. I dug it, but for me, I was always, I like the front of the house too, where I can talk to people. So that's, okay. the sandwich is in essence the embodiment, I believe, okay. of that kind of, okay. you know, so everybody loves a sandwich, I think, right? I have a question. Yes. So what is the one food that you like to eat, but you don't like to make? What is that? The one food you like I, to eat, but you don't like to make. Okay. You want to know? And this uh -huh. is very true. And Sarah can probably attest to that. Uh, I love, love rice in all forms, right? Jollof rice, okay. fried rice, uh -huh. sushi rice, paella, uh -huh. uh, risotto, uh, arancini. I can keep going with the rice thing. I cannot make rice. <laughs> Can't make it. I can make pasta blindfolded with one hand, you know, behind my back. I could make every other starch, potato, everything. I cannot make rice. Make rice. Wow. Rice cookers? Instapots? You don't know how it works? I, 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 I swear <laughs> I know how it works. I know. I went to color. I was valedictorian. I know how to make rice but I can't make rice. <laughs> okay. So I buy the bags of the frozen rice and I just pour, throw it in the microwave for three minutes. <laughs> Don't kill me! Okay, so do we have any questions? All right. Okay, we have a lady in pink. I think, no, I need, yeah, there we go, beautiful. Let's mix uh, some of this. Okay. Go ahead. Don't Hi, be Jeff. afraid. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I wanted to find out what's the one ingredient you have to put in your meal? Or what's the one ingredient you use for every meal you do? Say that again. I'm sorry. There's like the music over the thing. It's hard to hear. I'm going to come closer okay. to you. Okay. Close to you. <laughs> Thank you. <Ooh. laughs> 
Sorry, I had a moment, please. So what's that one ingredient you put in all of your meals that you really like, you can't do without? What's that one ingredient for you? Um, I would say <laughs> salt. Yeah, but stupid. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, I'm a sucker for mustard. Okay. Is it mustard big out here? Like Dijon mustard, deli mustard, stone ground mustard, yellow mustard, honey mustard. I think it, it, it scientifically, it's an emulsifier, so it brings together oil and liquids like in dressings. Uh, you could punch up any pan sauce or any other thing you can cock with a little mustard. I, I love it. We go through a lot of mustard in my house. As far as a dry spice, we've been, um, you know what we like? I don't know if you get it out here, but it's, it's everything, uh, everything bagel seasoning. Have you ever had? So it's got, you know, uh, onion, garlic, poppy seeds, sesame seeds in it. I mean, it's crunchy. It's salty. It's, it's got everything you need in it. You put it on everything. And we also like... Zatar and sumac we've been using a lot, which is a Middle Eastern spice. Okay. All right, so we're going to get our dredging station. Let me just move this, even though it's see-through. I'm coming, uh, guys. I'll take some more questions, but let's just let's yes, do let's this. Let's see. Let's see. So uh, I call them uh, a Feb stations. That's a good way for even myself to remember what order when you are breading something. Feb station. Does everybody know what Feb stands for? What's usually first you dunk that meat into? It starts with an F. Flour. Next. And B. There you go. Feb station. Now you'll never forget. Hashtag Feb. Every time you hashtag Feb, I make $10. Boom. That's not true. I don't own anything. Okay. So we're going to get kind of our uh, buttermilk style marinade going here, uh, which you can definitely, can I get a spoon please, like marinate this chicken overnight. But what I've done is take the same spice, spices we made for our hot Nashville style hot seasoning and just kind of coated this chicken in it this morning. It needs about anywhere from two to eight hours to help penetrate that. And remember, when you're using dark meat opposed to white meat, dark meat's much less forgiving than uh, white meat. So uh, by all means, marinate it overnight if it's all dark meat. But if there's chicken breast in there, it'll start cooking that meat a lot sooner. So there's no buttermilk, so we're just going to add some yogurt, which you can do, or a little lemon juice, to regular milk. And this is going to be part of our dredge here. But we're going to add the actual eggs in here. So we're going to omit, uh, omit one step and almost do a more traditional okay. um, style uh, uh, fried chicken here. So we're going to add two eggs to this. And we're going to season this a little bit. And that's it. And this is kind of going to be our, so you get the tang almost from the buttermilk, the milk and the acid in the yogurt. Or if you were to use lemon juice, makes buttermilk after a couple minutes. So, but this we're going to add a little bit of hot sauce. Okay. Just to have some fun with it. That was more than a little. Was that a little? Can you handle spice? Yeah. You guys can handle spice here, right? This is the hotter the environment, usually the more spicier the food. Jeff, do you want to take more questions? Please, take some questions. Okay. All right, we have a lady here. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Um, I have two questions. First of all, uh, what was your favorite or more traditional sandwich as in the first one you ever made before you started? My working? favorite sandwich, or the yeah. first, what was, what's my favorite sandwich? Pastrami on rye with a schmear of mustard, but like good pastrami from... It's the best. When it's hand cut, it's, it's so fatty, but rendered and smoky and peppery. I love it. It's the essence of simplicity, but also so much work goes into it. Second, what is the, my favorite sandwich I've ever made? Or the first? The, the more traditional first sandwich you ever made. Traditional. Here, hold that up. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Your traditional sandwich you ever made while working. While working. I mean, okay. The first work you ever did while making your traditional sandwich. Okay. I think I got it. What's while we're, like my first professional sandwich I ever made? Yeah. Right? Something like that. I think it was like obviously like a turkey, lettuce, tomato, honey mustard, jardinera peppers on there. I made it for myself. I didn't charge myself. Did he taste good? And I got fired. <laughs> Not a good story. <laughs> so was it good? Was of it course it was good. I made it. Uh, Come I, on. I don't trust you, Jeff. <laughs> I don't trust you at all. Do we have any other questions? 
Okay, mm -hmm. we have a lady at the back there. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, what kind of advice can you give a fast food restaurant in the midst of um, competitions? Like there are a lot of competitors around, both casual dining, fast food, um, fine dining. And the restaurant, the fast food restaurant is striving to even make some money. It's like, you don't get, like, um, they are striving among the competitors. And there is a particular one near the restaurant that is always having customers all the time. But the few customers that enter the fast food restaurant kept on saying the food tastes good than the other restaurants. But yet, customers are not coming in. So you're saying how to retain all those customers? The Yes, and how to win over the other ones that are going to the other restaurant. <laughs> Threatening them with their life. Doesn't that work? Um, uh, you know what? It's hard. That's, I guess that's the magic question for any person in the restaurant business. Not only how do you get them in the door, but how do you get them back in the door? And I think, you know, food is one thing, but like I'm a firm believer in making it easy for people to, to return. So whether that's like a parking issue or a customer service issue, you know, you want people to feel comfortable there. I mean, the food could be amazing, but it, it could take, it could be a very difficult experience to get to. You know, I know in the States, at one of my restaurants, parking's an issue. So people don't want to return because they don't want to deal with the city traffic and parking. So we're opening somewhere with unlimited parking, right? Because that's how we're going to get them to stay there. But it's all about quality of food, consistency, and customer service, and a perceived value, you know, to get them back in the door. So if you hit all those things, I don't know. Jeff? And you're rolling in it. I yes. want us to finish this up, so perhaps we'll hold on to the questions. I have 34 minutes. I could see my sign right there. Jeff. Whew, I, I mean, know, you gotta, I, I talk, I talk lots. <laughs> okay. Okay, so guys, I just want to remind you, mm -hmm. follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tag us, ask your questions, we'll take questions. Je Jeff is very happy to answer them. I am very so happy. So feel free. So what are we doing now? All right, what are we doing now is I have my flour, a little bit of seasoning in here. I got my buttermilk and eggs in here, which is kind of going to be the glue. Okay. I got my marinated chicken, which we didn't do in any liquid, all dry spice marinade. Okay, now we are going to start frying this up. All right, we're going to do... Are you going to tell us what you put in, in the chicken? Yes, I have that right here. So okay. this is going to be, this is all meased out, right? Beautiful. So this is just, um, is this cayenne or uh, chili powder? And cayenne, a little garlic, granulated garlic and salt. Okay. Right? We got a little uh, onion powder. So you got the sweet, you got sugar in there, you got all these, the sugar was in here too, right? Correct? Beautiful. Thank you. And a little pepper. And this is kind of that essence if you get the smoky, complex spice from the chili powder and the paprika, you get the sweetness from the brown sugar, the saltiness, and this is kind of like the magic dust. Okay. And there's only one more magic step that this requires, and that's after we fry the chicken. We'll get to that in a okay. second. All so right. that's all this was on that chicken. So you make a batch of this, as there's enough for the chicken, there's enough uh, for that moment when we get to uh, make it a hot chicken. Hot chicken. Okay? okay? All right. And then I got some uh, mustard seeds here. We'll get to that in a minute. And we're gonna start frying it up, right? With the conversion, this should be ready. Beautiful, 160 we're saying with the Celsius. Great. Take some tongs here. Now, a step I like to do with this to kind of make it restaurant grade is to pour about a tablespoon directly in to the flour. And this helps give it those craggly little crusts, right? Mimicking like just churning and burning all day fried chicken. One of the first restaurants I ever worked at was a soul food restaurant where I was on the fried chicken station. And, you know, I learned a lot about frying chicken, but I also learned a lot about how to smell for six days straight like fried chicken and not be able to wash it out of your hair. Because if you're frying, right, you got to open up a window. But there was no windows in this. And I was inside the fryer all day. It was amazing. So you can kind of see that, right? Just like that little process right there is going to make that difference. A little bit more. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be good. All right. So we got that ready to go. Okay. And we got our chicken. So this goes right to the buttermilk. So I got some boneless thighs on here. I got some bone-in thighs. 
But for this sandwich, you want to make sure it's a boneless, skin, skinless thigh. That way you get the most, uh, you get a good bite down, right? You never want to wrestle with your food. You know, sandwiches, like I said, it's ratios. It's all what's in between, but it's also about making sure you, you, you're, you can get everything clean in one nice bite, bite down. Otherwise, right, you, sometimes you get some funky meat and you take a bite and you end up wrestling yeah. it and then half the sandwich <laughs> comes off. And then it hits your shirt and you're on your way to the big ball. And then you have to go home with your wife and change your shirt, which makes you an hour late, right? And then you're arguing on the way there, right back Sarah to the house. Is and like then you have to go in and time. you're like, honey, where's my blue button down? <laughs> well, I don't know where your blue button down. I just brought it back from the dry cleaners. And then you're like, honey, I love you. I just need some help right now. But next thing you know, right? I'm on the couch for three days. That's why when you make a sandwich, make sure you can bite down. Save okay. your marriage. Save your marriage, guys. Okay, I'm giving, I am like, I, you know, it's a whole thing I'm doing. Doing a whole marriage program here. Okay, so we're going to let this sit in there. You can see it's nice and thick. That's because we added the eggs in there and the buttermilk and the yogurt. So it cleans really nicely. It's not just like you're putting it, just regular milk in there. And then we're literally going to let it kind of drip off the excess right into there and you don't want to leave it in here too long right you want to move move it okay. so we have try not there to there you go right okay let's take shake one question a little shake and bake where's the mic okay we have a lady we have a question back. yeah for the most part uh, you know a, a credit you know it's it starts and stops with your staff and how much they believe in, in, in keeping you know the brand consistent and keeping quality so I'll be honest we, we we've been open for over three years and we, we we went through a lot of different people in the beginning and it wasn't easy um, uh, so now I have good partners finally but, but 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 when I had one restaurant it was actually the most hardest because I put the most time into it now that I have, you know, a good staff and good partners, but there's always something going on. I, I didn't put, I didn't build this Pork and Mindy's brand. It's like a licensing deal or something to just put my name on. Like I built it from the ground up. I'm a partner. It's a very grueling business and I'm learning something new every day. And some days I wish I never got involved in it. <laughs> TV is a lot easier than the restaurant business, I would say. So look at that. Do you see them Cragleys on there? You see that? One more douse. This is why you got to use your hands for this to get to get in all those things. But but this is going to be beautiful on there because you do got those shards, and we're just going to lay it right away from you. Boom, just like that. They call this walking the uh, walking the fish in a chip shop. Here you go. So boom, lay it in nice. Oh, nice good clean oil. So this is going to fry depending like 350 or is uh, in uh, Celsius, about 160 Celsius, which if you do the math, I'm sure is correct. Beautiful. All right, who's going to be on this for me? Someone's going to be watching this fry. So we're going to, we're going to if, if you guys got an instrument read thermometer, I want to bring it to about 165, okay? And then we'll, nice clean rest there. I'm going to wash my hands. 
Where's there some soap, my friend? Ha! Ah! Any questions? Anything? Okay. Okay, we have a lady there. Um, hi. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm bathing myself. Yes, where are you at? Okay, Wave your hand. Um, hi, how are you? Uh, hi, I'm fine. I was wondering, how How's your mom? You... Good? Your mom good? She happy? She healthy? She get that thing I sent her? The... No, 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 no. I, I, made, I made her a drum cake. It's being... <laughs> <laughs> I don't get you. Okay, um, I wanted to ask, how do you come about your recipes? I mean, do you just toss things together and you're like, jackpot if it works? Uh, or good is question. There, is there a system to it? I think I start with just... I constantly look at pictures of food on the internet, I think, you know? And that's probably the easiest and the greatest source, at least from, you know, a, a visual standpoint. I have some, you know, uh, other cookbook authors and recipe online sites that I kind of get inspiration from that are very, uh, I think, very credible, well-tested recipes. But also travel and going out to eat and, you know, seeing something and, you know, gleaning from that a new, a new idea. You know, it's like art, right? Nothing, nobody's, I'm not the first to put fried chicken on a bun, you know, but how do I put my... Jeff Morrow spin on it, and how do I make it my own? How do I sometimes even make it better? So there's always ways, you know. It's fun to, when I test out recipes for the kitchen, kind of reverse engineer it and take it from almost a scientific approach and see how I can make it better. Sometimes I just sit in bed on my laptop and write a recipe and think it, you know, it makes sense in my head and it comes out great, you know, without even testing it. So I don't know, it's either like, I love, I just going to websites and looking at pictures. Instagram's a great tool for that. But so much food on Instagram is, just looks pretty, I think. I don't think it tastes pretty. Like all these like unicorn foods and stuff. Right, like purple, purple and pink food. Yesterday we had Chef Kinora come tell us about food photog photography. Oh, and cool. And how, you know, the food can look good in pictures. But one of the raging questions that we kept on having was, if he looks good, what if he doesn't taste so good? Yeah, so, what I mean, if? Who's to blame, right? Is it us? Us. Liking that beautiful food with the thing, the shake, you know the shakes? Yeah. You seen the shakes with like a cake on the outside? Uh -huh. They put frosting on the glass. <laughs> so now I'm gonna pay, what, $23 for a shake that has really no shake in it. It's all a bunch of, it's like, there's, 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 there's muffins in there, there's like a licorice. It's like a half a, like there's a whole drumstick in there. And then this frosting's on the side of the glass. Exactly. Yeah. So I finish the shake and then I'm like, Hi. <laughs> is that what you do to the shake? Milk, oh, ice cream, chocolate syrup, mm -hmm. peanut butter, if you're in the mood. That's what I like. Oh, okay. All right. No so what am I saying? You, you, food is beautiful. It's great to look at. But ultimately, we do have to eat it. You and it has to be delicious. So. I guess, yeah. I, 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 I hope there's a trend, and I mean, everybody's very conscious about what they're eating these days and everything, but I hope, you know, just, you know, pe people who go, we have people come to our restaurant, you know, and get, you know, we provide them the whole menu, and they take beautiful Instagram, right, and they have 120,000 followers, and they're taking the shots, and they're eating the, th they're, they're taking the, and then they're going outside, and then they're getting a stool, and they're putting the sandwich on a stool, and then they're like, no. you know, no, this, no, right? And then they're no, like, careful. oh, I'm frying my mic back. And they're doing all this stuff, and guess what they never do? These Instagram blogger, they never take a bite of the food. So I'm like, you, you got all this food. I'm like, you guys want a sandwich? And they're like, no, we're good. <laughs> but they use that to promote your own business. I know, but I wish they use it to promote their taste buds. <laughs> It's all about the we money, get this no? on? You know, you could do that one over there. Yeah, with some butter in there. Okay. The so chicken we, is done. Oh, my God. Wait, did you, you didn't, we could do the rest of this. You want to just start dredging that for me and just okay. start frying some chicken? I don't think people are going to mind. But look at that. This is what we're look like. Look at that. Look at that. Nice and hot. Oh. See, beautiful, it right? so good. That's why we put that little trick of just putting a little bit of that buttermilk uh, coating into the actual dredge and flour is amazing. All right, we got a, a quick sauce we're gonna make. All right, so little mayonnaise, because I love fried chicken with a little bit of creaminess. Add a little sweet, because we got, we got salty, we got spicy, we got rich. So a little sweet in there from honey. Okay. 
These bees, this is from a, a beehive I have in my, on my roof. No. 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 Right. Wow, Jeff. call me out quick, I guess. <laughs> Someone's BS meter uh, went right off. There we go. And this is just a quick little, if you have a little mustard, would be nice in here too. What did you just throw in? What's that? You just threw something in. So honey and a little black pepper, right? Black so pepper. you got a nice right. kind of mayo-based sauce. Okay. Okay. Now we got some hot oil over here. We got our buns about to go. Yep, let's get this hot. Now I said, right, fresh bread is key. But sometimes bread is beyond fresh or it's been sitting in the pantry for a day or two. So I think all bread needs to be treated. At, at Pork and Mindy's, we butter and griddle every single piece of bread. Oh, and okay. what that does is not only create you know, a, 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 you know, refreshing the bread, if you will, right? By heating it up, like you have some old bread, frozen bread, you throw it in the oven, it's almost as good as new, provided it wasn't laying there for weeks on end. Uh, but it also gives it a beautiful color, a crunch, a texture, and flavor. And, and beautiful. Yeah. Now, and it ends up tasting really I know really butter, fresh. butter might not be so uh, super easy to come by, so this is fine with oil. Vegetable oil works too. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not kidding around. I want more butter in there, my friend. Okay. Look at that. So you want to make sure this is done at medium. Oh, that's a lot of butter. Hey, oh, I want sorry. your opinions to yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> you just called me chubby and I didn't like it. <laughs> We're yeah. team fit fam here. See, you want it? Look at that. That's, that's, that's about it. I'm going to lower the heat real, really quick here so we don't... Oh, this is a very important spot. Uh, do you guys do a lot of grilling outside, a lot of barbecue, yes. right? Yeah. I think this is, too many times people, I think, put their buns and stuff directly on the grill and it just kind of toasts it and makes it too brittle and hard and you get shards of bread all over you. This way, you bring this outside and you get it in a flat pan with a little oil, you can control it more and you get, you rehydrate the bread and you get that beautiful, that's great, man. I don't even need much more on that. Okay. Just keep, yeah, maybe, maybe another minute. Okay, so we got the sauce, we got the pickles. Now our topping here, again, some iceberg lettuce. Beautiful. So with iceberg, right, you give it a little, a little deli trick and then you get, get that stem right out. Clean. Anybody want this? <laughs> Who wants it? No, we no? want the chicken. We want the chicken, exactly. Yeah. So I love shredded iceberg on sandwiches. I think it's just, again, you're not getting any of that tear. You're not getting a, sometimes when it's whole leaf and you take a bite, even though it's a real tender green, you can't get through it, your teeth, because they're exhausted from the top uh -huh. down. And then you get to the basement and next thing you know, this thing comes kind of just shooting out of you, but nice close cuts just like that. Okay, should we take a question? We got a question, go with the question. Okay, one question, please. Hi, Chef. Hello. Um, apart from cooking, what other interests do you have? What other hobbies or interests do you have? Other than cooking, what other interests? Yes. I would say um, I'm, I'm, I'm very big into music. I have, uh, it's perfect to take that guy out too. I, uh, I, I listen to music, I play music, I played guitar and sang since I was 13 years old. Wow. I mean, I'm, I've been in bands. Me and Duff yeah. had a band last year. What um, kind of music do you play in the band? Uh, rock and roll, blues, oh, okay. you know, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, I love playing music with my son. My 10-year-old Lorenzo plays drums and sings. Lorenzo. And we have a music room in the basement with his drum kit and my guitars and mics and everything. Okay. And we have just a, a two-piece band. We're called Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. <laughs> Soon to be one morrow. I might be getting kicked out of the band. <laughs> He's progressing a little quicker at than I am at 10 years old. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, I love that. I love, you know, I love eating out. I love having, you know, we, we have a big family and everybody lives in our neighborhood still. So, I mean, my family's my, my greatest hobby, I think. Oh, fantastic. And we, you know, almost too much family living by us. Yeah. And we look forward to Lorenzo's album. His, his album, One Morrow, yeah. <laughs> One Morrow. <laughs> he's, he's uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. But do that. That's about it. Music. Playing music. Listening music? to music. Oh, okay. Making things. Okay. Um, very good. So now here's, we got this bowl here. Oh, this is perfect. Great. So now we're going to take, remember that, that hot seasoning? Mm -hmm. We're going to put that in there, right? Next, we are going to 
Can I get a ladle, please, real quick? A ladle? Do you have a ladle? A ladle. How's that looking? So good. Do you have a ladle? Any questions while we're wait, wait, waiting to go to the ladle store? Okay, we have a Pick up some fresh the gentleman ladles. in the red cap. In a red cap. Thank you. All right, hold on. We're going to watch this, right? So you take that oil. I see. And you put it right into that spice. So it is like blooming like you've never seen anything bloom before. So you don't have to toast this. I mean, all that's happening right oh. there. You see kind of how it, there you go, that helps. Look at I make TV. And you want it more than a, like a little, little soupier than a paste. You want to be able to kind of paint this on the chicken or physically like dunk the whole chicken into there. Look at that. Whoo! Looks nice. Okay, that's good to go. All right, now we're gonna do my favorite part of the day, which is the sandwich build. All right, so we got all our mise en place ready to go here. We got our chicken, our hot stuff, our bread, meat, and we got some lettuce. And we got our beautiful pickles right here. The magic is about to happen. So again, I'm already looking at everything, right? Nothing's waiting, my chicken's hot, this is hot, the bread is perfectly toasted. Again, like you're plating in a restaurant, you make your sandwiches. You give them the, the same amount of attention. Okay. The only thing left to do is I'm going to do a couple thin slices, some fresh tomatoes. Almost paper thin. So you don't get too much resistance, again, on the bite down. Great, that's good to go. And we got our sauce right here. I think you have it there. Where's the, uh, the sauce I made? Oh, it's right here. Beautiful. So we're going to start by building on the top here. And if you guys watch The Kitchen, you watch Sandwich King. Does anybody know my saying about applying sauce? What's that? Crust to crust is a must. All right. Well done. Well done. That was one person. I made it, Ma. Um, <laughs> So we're going to make sure, because every, every, every bite you want even, right? Sometimes you, get, you order a sandwich from somewhere, the first bite is just bread and lettuce and sauce. I want it all even, Steven. Okay, so we got, I think I'm going to do, oh, that's a big one right there. So now we take this, right? And I'm going to literally dunk it right in there. Wait till you see this. I know who's going to be tasting this. So who's going to be tasting it? That young lady over there. Who wants to taste it? Who asked the best question, I guess, I should say. <laughs> Perhaps it was the young lady who answered the last question. Yes, maybe. Where's crust to crust is the most? Come on down! Yeah! Come on down! <laughs> You're gonna eat a sandwich. Okay, yeah, truly. You and me eating sandwiches. Sarah, he's leaving I'm the band. Gonna he's give leaving the band. The One morrow. Sandwich. One more. It's gonna be so good. Jeff. What? We have seven minutes. Oh, oh, so you mean I can sing for not seven minutes and 56 seconds. All right, I put the lettuce on the bottom. Controversial, I know, but that's gonna help kind of okay. bolster, create airflow under there so the chicken remains crispy and not just getting soggy against the bottom bun. Thinking, right? Engineering yeah. this mm -hmm. all the way. A couple, watch this, little tomatoes right on top there. And look at all these beautiful, look at this. Look at all this color. Mm. That's, you got the pink, right? And the longer the, the red onions pickle, uh, pickle, the pinker they get, right? So you can leave this all in there and it's only gonna get brighter, right? And last longer. That's a great way when like we do in our house, we, we make a big batch of pickled stuff if it's starting to see, you know, not, not be, <laughs> past its prime if you say. Great, now we can close up the top and take a look at that. Oh, so beautiful. You are so beautiful to me. Can't you see? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm it's really okay. One more. One more? You said, one more? How dare you? We're kicking you out of the band. Oh, no. 
All right, normally, I, I, we, we don't cut our, how you doing, what's your name? Zanas. Zanas, Zanas, nice to meet you. Are you allergic to anything here? Because I don't want to get sued today. All right, you're not allergic to peppers, no. to chickens, no. to buns. Mayo. Delicious mayo spread, which no. is spread? Crust. With honey. Oh, crust, crust. Is Same a must, way. there you go. It would have been more impressive if you had a shirt that said crust to crust is a must. We're gonna get but I one. do like the old cut in half. Where are we at? Where's my guy right here? You got that? You might want to do mega zoom for this. That's what I love, right? I love seeing all the, you know, the cross section. Beautiful. All right. Give it to her. Give it to her. Okay, so I'm gonna make another one here. Who else uh, wants to ask a smart I'm question? Have one. I got other fried chicken here. Okay, so I want to take a, a smart question. Has to be really smart. Smart okay. question, but okay, not let's math have the, uh, or geography. Okay, yeah, or yeah, world yeah, politics or social studies okay. or science, please. It's basically all school subjects, please. Not. Uh, good afternoon, Jeff. My name is Ben. So I'm curious. You need uh, to speak up. I'm curious. So what is that one? I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So what is that one element that makes your sandwich the best? As Wh you think? What's the one element of your sandwich that makes it the best? The one element that mm, makes that, it the best. I'm going to be honest. People probably say the meat or the everything in between. I think it's the bread. Um, I think if you could have the greatest burger in the world, right? It's hand ground. Japanese imported Wagyu beef that was made in a village somewhere by like three monks who sat there and like minced it with, you know, tiny knives and forks and then carried it on a mule up the hill to the helicopter, which delivered it to the shop, right? Uh -huh. And then expertly cooked and grilled. Weak, you know, that's possible. <laughs> but if the bread sucks, then the bread So do the you make sucks. your own bread? I do not make my own bread. Okay. I just find either really good fresh bread or treat it with a little oil, a little butter in a pan, or put it in the oven and heat it up in foil or whatever. Because, okay. you know, even, even if it's a little past its prime, again, you can help reactivate it. Where's some salt? Okay, so how would you rate that question? Was it a good question? That was an okay question. Come on down. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's have one question, another question. Let's have the lady in front. <laughs> can we have the lady, in, yeah, in the front? I seat. got you, boo. Okay. How you doing? Thank you. All right, you, you don't mind spice, right? It's got some kick. Couple of potatoes here. How is it? Did you have a? It's good, very spicy. Very spicy, is it too spicy? No. All right, good, because it's a, you know. Through the spice. You know what they say, the only sandwich you can't complain about is a free sandwich. <laughs> okay, you can have some of this. But this bread is awesome. So oh, this, yeah? I assume, was made, this bread is like my favorite kind of bread. Squishy, I pillowy. Have to try one of that. There you go. Look at that. Okay. How is it? Frosty. Okay, okay, now you have to do, all right. Can, sorry, I'm taking your job. It's okay. I have a microphone. So you need to do a, a, a Food Network taste bite. You know how we do, right? We're very trained in the Food Network. No matter if we think it's garbage, we're always like, <clears throat> It is so balanced. It's like the perfect combination of tart, sweet, savory, with a little note, top note, slight spice that just kind of lingers on the back of your tongue. And then, but the funny thing is, when you chew it, it's a symphony in time, in tune, in sync in your mouth. And when I swallow it, I could feel it in my upper GI tract, slowly moving down, and then I, no, and then see, okay. So that's too much, right? It's all about adjectives on the Food Network. Spicy, salty, we, we make them up. Jeffrey Zakarian made up a word that's now become like a, a meme almost a couple seasons ago, and he just came out, he just said, swazzle. He ran out of stuff to say. So obviously, this is your chance. This is your big Food Network audition. You take a bite, not, not too much, because it's a TV bite. Unless you're Sonny Anderson, who has no, who's got no, it just, she just takes whatever the hell she wants, and we love her for it. All right, here we go. What's your name again? Ben. Ben? All right, I could say that. 
Ben, here we go. Bite. It's a big bite, pretty big bite. All right, uh-oh. Wow, amazing. Wait, now remember, it's, you have to know it. Like, every, even though it's good, you're like, oh, this is so good, right? Okay, amazing, and um, how many bites tastes like, uh, I'm in the paradise, and it tastes so sweet, and I feel, I feel good, I feel, I feel I'm alive. Uh, you know, food is life, so it's medicine, so I feel I just take the best medicine in the world. So. Awesome. Now look at the camera and say, we'll be right back. Oh, we'll be right back. <laughs> give, him a, give him a better round of applause. We got another minute. Does anybody want to take one quick Food Network bite here? If you can. Who's, who's got the best? I mean, who's feeling it? Who is like? Hi, Jeff. Who's, who's got it? All right, hey. you in the yellow. Come on down. Come on down. That's the Tonight Show theme music, but whatever. I do my thing. And then we're going to take a selfie with everybody behind me doing, going crazy. Is that cool? Don't let me forget. All right? What's up? How much you bench? Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, you're going to take double mic. Awesome. Thanks, Ben. All right, you ready? You know the rules? What's your name? Cassandra. Cassandra. Do you have dreams of being on television? Yeah, I'm going to. You're an actor. So, oh, this is an actor. All right. Do we have a freshie to take a bite? Remember, nice small bite so you can talk. Because ben took a little big of a bite. It was He spit on me a little bit. I got a little hot sauce in my eye. We won't talk about that now, will we? All right, Cassandra. You ready? Adjectives. Every one, even if it doesn't apply. Like, mm, it's a bit squirrely. You're like, what? Whoa. Oh wow, it's, it's magnificent, it's perfecto, it's por favor. Por favor, oh Spanish, give the Sandra on the was. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the sandwich Thank you guys so much. So let's talk about these sandwiches. Um, what's the best tip to avoid soggy sandwiches? I saw you put the lettuce at the bottom, which yes. is strategic. I think it's about the placement of, if it's a juicy element, uh -huh. you know, like a, like a big juicy burger or uh -huh. a chicken breast, something with heat to uh -huh. it, you got to have a nice barrier like lettuce. Okay. You'd rather have the lettuce kind of suffer a little bit okay. than half your bun. True, true, true. Right? Because soggy buns sometimes. They're gross. And by the time you're done with it, it's like They're disintegrated. Yeah, it's like dough. Yeah. So let's talk about hot sandwiches. Cause hot. we didn't really go through those, right? Hot no. sandwiches. Mm. Are you a of fan? Of course, I'm a fan of all sandwiches. Okay, They're so all my children. <laughs> so what's I love your them favorite all hot sandwich? And some tips to keeping those nice and not too soggy as well. Okay, I would say uh, again, hamburger, right? Nice juicy charred uh, hamburger, but it's also about the bread choice, right? If you yeah. have softer, hot ingredients, you want a crustier bread that's going to hold up to that so temperature. So what's like a crustier bread? Like a nice French roll. Okay. And rather than okay, just okay. having it all soft, throw it in the oven for a couple minutes and cool. kind of reactivate and get a nice outside crust to it. So when you bite into it, it's got that crunch to it, but also inside's nice and pillowy. I see. I mm -hmm. see. Okay. So have you tried any Nigerian food? I did. I la Last night I had some uh, jollof rice. Okay. Some beef suya, chicken suya. Okay. Some like sliced up snails, some goat, Ooh, so you tried the snails. some poof poof, <laughs> with some uh, puff puff, yeah. <laughs> some orange fish with the butter, that was very good. Yeah. Uh, Are you going to start putting any of these, maybe like the course. suya into the I love it. I mean, there's so many kitchen. recipes we do on the kitchen, so constant, uh -huh. yeah. that we need to, you know, draw from our own personal experiences, which always makes the food more interesting and ultimately better. So you make a lot of sandwiches. Anyone ever tell you you're a snack? <laughs> no, I'm a main course. <laughs> How dare you? All right, we'll calm down. <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much for coming.